Welcome to your weekly Social Jack Influence Factory. Introducing your coaches, Dean Delisle, Kate Hassett, and Jackson Delisle. <laughs> hey, what's it's, happening, it's... team? No. Hey. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it almost know, sounds it's, it's it sounds like it's not you and then it becomes you. It's almost like a transformation, which is <laughs> Leonard just said nice. So it's uh it's I don't even know better. what you're talking I don't even know what you're talking about. That wasn't me. Was <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, we want to thank uh, thank everybody. Hey, Shirley, how you doing? And Eric, uh, everybody that's checking in here real quick. So I uh, want to uh, welcome you. We have a special edi edition. I have a, a friend of mine from New York that's uh, going to be on with us here in a few minutes after we get through a lot of uh, little uh, logistics, a few lessons, and some cool things. So welcome, everybody, to this edition of the Influence Factory, uh, where we want you to walk away with uh, some takeaways so that you can increase your influence just a little bit more each and every week. And we want you to learn from the influencers that uh, we bring on as we do about cool uh, new tips. And it's interesting, Kate uh, and Jackson, we have, um, we have sort of have, always have a superhero theme here, but I think uh, our, our guest today takes it to just a little bit of a next level, but everybody has their own edge on it. Uh, Kate asked me, she goes, does everybody uh, does every single person you bring on have something to do with superheroes? And because I'm a superhero freak, I think maybe that's our uh, connection to one another. <laughs> but uh, I want to welcome everybody. So real quick, please turn off your cell phone or maybe just flip it upside down while you're with us for a few minutes. Just to turn away, you know, turn uh, those distractions off. Close your email, take some notes, and you definitely will learn some good takeaways. And then uh, for those of you that uh, that maybe can't catch us all the time, but you do want to tune in, uh, Jackson, where can they um, where can they find us uh, after these productions? I know you post them in a lot of places. Yeah, so you can find the uh, recording of the uh, video of this on uh, YouTube, as uh, and then you can find our podcast, which is just the audio. So let's say you're in your car, you can listen to our. Uh, uh, podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud. So uh, it'll be uh, all in the email. There's going to be a link to our uh, Social Jack site that will uh, have all the information. You can subscribe to all of our channels right in there. So super duper duper cool. Thanks, Jackson, for that and for making all that happen each and every week. Uh, so super quick. Um, we always ask a question because we want to make sure that you can find uh, how to ask questions. Now, the people that have been around for a while have been chatting in here and they, hey, Roger, how you doing? And have a um, have an edge on you because we have a little bit of an engagement contest. And we want to those of you that play with us and engage, we always uh, work to pick a new winner in here. So here's your chance. So we have some new attendees in here. And so um, uh, Kate came up with this question. Uh, so. Uh, Kate, why don't you ask this, but uh, then you might have to clarify what it is. Go ahead and ask the question. T today's right. question, what we want you to do is type this into the questions area of the GoToWebinar taskbar. Go ahead, Kate. All right, so the question this week is, what is your spirit animal? So if you don't know what a spirit animal is, it's like an animal that you identify with. For instance, mine is a bird, because I really like to travel and really like to fly somewhere. So that's mine. What's yours, Dean? What's your spirit animal? I'm, I always identified with a panther. When I was a kid, I grew them. I, I just thought they were cool, and uh, they they sort of came out of nowhere. And of course, I you know the martial arts I identify with ninjas and things like that. They're mysterious, um, somewhat wow. fast. So I like that. So and the black panther, of course, is like the big thing right now. So I know, I know, totally they, uh, on trend. Right? They must have read my mind. It was time. Uh, so what Roger, about you, Jackson? Yeah, Jackson. Sorry. What do you want? Ah, uh, um. I don't know. I always liked uh, lion, but then the monkey. I like the monkeys great too, because I mean they're hilarious. They're probably the funniest animal. You know what I mean? <laughs> hilarious. Like that's the best thing when you go to the zoo. If you have never just looked at them, just just I could sit in the you know watch the monkeys all day. They always messing with each other. It's awesome. I love it so. Yeah, except don't they fling their poop? I'm not even going to go there. That's sort of crazy. It's hilarious. <laughs> that was a really big thing. 
that. Yeah, right. That's exactly. the real reason. Yeah, you guys knew. I wasn't gonna get. I wasn't gonna go into it, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, right. So we have uh, Max who says elephant. Leonard says lion. Tom says crow. That's interesting. I wish. Uh, I wish I had time to to do all these. That's we right. have uh, Shirley who's a wolf. Uh, I like that. Uh, James is a, a leopard. Uh, Roger is a tiger. Uh, and let's see. Oh, Shannon, a unicorn. I like that. Ooh, that's um, a good one. Yeah, we have a couple of wolves out here today. So uh, there you go. And then uh, koala, uh, orangutan. Uh, so uh, there you go. Um, as a child, monkey and a, oh my gosh, Eric Spencer. Eric, you're hilarious. All right, I'm not going to repeat that, but uh, we'll do that in the uh, next version. Yeah, but but we yeah. know, but we know. So that's all that matters. <laughs> Thank you for that, Eric. I, I'm glad to know. <laughs> yes, you have that bonding. You have that bonding. All right, folks, if you need, for any reason you lose heart connection, um, you can always dial in so you can click on a button here that says, you know, on your audio that says, com you know, click from computer audio to the phone. It'll give you a phone number or there's a mobile app for GoToWebinar. You can always join us that way as well. But don't view and drive. You can listen and drive. So that's our public service announcement. All right, cool. As Jackson mentioned, mentioned we love to have you in Social Jack members. So what we're going to start doing uh, is over the summer, we're working on a matchmaking program, not for dating, although you could probably use it for that. Uh, but we're going to have professional matchmaking. So we're going to have you complete your profiles and we're going to start matching you up with referrals inside the Social Jack membership system. So many of you are members, those of you that are not, um, it's super easy. You just go there and sign up. Uh, what is it, Jackson? I think the first few weeks is free and then it's $20 a month, but you get access to coaching. So if you have coaching questions, let's say you pick up a lesson. Let's say uh, you watch one of our classes. Uh, you watch a flash class, which we have tomorrow morning on events. You watch one of these things and you just are starting to go to work uh, on things, on your influence. And you want to, you want to ask our coaches question, questions. You have coaching access in our platform. Uh, you also have over 300 classes, certification classes, uh, fast track classes. There's all kinds of cool things in there. So if you're interested in that, hold on, I'll just bring up a quick, um, if you want to speak to somebody about membership, just go ahead and click on the button. We'll make sure somebody gets back to you. Uh, at the same time, we have uploaded all new worksheets in there, all new, um, you know, all new access to uh, new tools that we're putting up there. So there's constantly, there's about 400, 500 items total up there, I think. So it's uh, definitely cool. And we're uploading all the new influencer modules up there. So why not? Okay, there we go. Okay, so super quick. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, there we go. So, oh, you get discounts too. Discounts are cool. All right, so we're excited. Tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock Central or Eastern Time to 4.30 Eastern Time, uh, we have a virtual event, content creation and marketing for brand building. Um, if you would like, you're going to hear from uh, Samantha from uh, Starbucks. You're going to hear from Eric from Denny's and our buddy Ryan, who we had on a few weeks ago, nonprofit Be The Match. So they're going to share with us some case studies around uh, content marketing, content creation, and brand building. We will automatically register the people that are on today, just the live people that are on today. It's free. It's 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 brand spanking free there, Eric. If you want, we will register you unless you say not interested in the questions area. This way, even if you can't make it, you'll get access to the recording. But it's going to be cool uh, to the point where you're going to actually learn from these big brands. So I would imagine you want to be in there, but everybody that's listening to my voice live on the air, not everybody that's listening to the recording, you can go register. And Jackson, uh, can you send everybody the link to register? Cause we're pretty tight on this. Just send everybody the link uh, if they want to send it out and, and have people go, but, um, right. Yes, there you go. <laughs> and so everybody's like, yes, register, register, can't wait, can't wait. Okay, good, yeah, it's really cool. Now in the morning, we also have one if you wanna fill an event. Now as Social Jack or as Influence Factory subscribers, you automatically get enrolled in our Flash classes. These are specific classes that are only 20 minutes long. We're gonna share with you uh, the cool ways that we use influencer marketing to fill events. So you should already be registered. And again, you can always listen to the recording. You don't have to attend live. Just the, the, the benefit to live is that you can ask questions uh, on the spot to whoever's uh, given that session. So we have two sessions tomorrow, so it's jam-packed. Uh, we also have How to Rock Your Personal Brand on Thursday, uh, April 5th. 
We have how to convert connections to clients on Thursday, April 19th. And then we have our big Chicago influencer class coming up in May. And there's a waiting list for that. So I'll be asking you uh, shortly about a waiting list. But before we get there, Kate has some news that she's going to cover today. So Kate, let me get you out to the news here. So LinkedIn ads, uh, adds a new ask for referral option. Now this is pretty interesting. So uh, if you know anybody that's uh, looking for jobs in, you know, ready to uh, jump their career, tell us a little bit about what this is. Absolutely. So I really liked this news article because I'm a, I'm a preacher of asking for referrals, asking for help. You know, you definitely have to, that's how I got hooked up with Dean was through LinkedIn. And so I feel like it's a great resource and um, LinkedIn just added this brand new option. So on the LinkedIn profile, you can ask for a referral. So if there's a job that you're looking at, you can literally get connected to anybody you know at that company, ask for a referral, and 50% of recruiters actually find referrals to be the best quality hires. So it's a really big thing. It's another way to use your LinkedIn um, instead of just submitting for the job and using it as a resume. It's another way to use your network and leverage it. And I think it's a great option. Um, LinkedIn, as you know, has 546 million members. So you're bound to know somebody at the company. And they have a couple tips if you want to share with the people you're asking for a referral, what you want to say to them when you're asking, remind them how they know you because they might not remember. So, hey, you can write them a little message. Hey, you remember I met you here and then tell them why you're a good fit and then highlight while you're interested in the job. And they can also um, bring that right to their employer, right to the person that's hiring. So really great option. And it's a lot easier than trying to find their phone number, find their email, pick up a call. You could do it all on LinkedIn. So I think it's a really yeah. great option. Yeah, awesome. Fine. So uh, as always, Jackson will send these links out to everybody in the follow up email. So watch for that. Um, the next thing is the rising importance of influencer marketing. And you know, we always try to bring you the hottest things that can help accelerate your influence. So what did we learn on this, uh, Kate? Well, so Jackson's going to send this out. There's a really great infographic that you should take a second to look at, but I'm just going to highlight a couple key points. Um, influencer marketing, as we know, delivers 11 times higher ROI than traditional forms of digital marketing. Leveraging your network is automatically going to help with your return on investment. So just if you needed another reason to be utilizing influencer marketing, this is it. Also, 94% of the marketers who've used influencer marketing find it to be the most effective method. Method. So it's not just us, it's everybody. Everybody is using it. So this uh, infographic has some more statistics on how to use it and uh, the best ways to use it. And of course, we have tons of resources in the Social Jack Academy. So if you want to look at the infographic a little longer, it will be in the follow up email. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, what's interesting is, you know, we look at uh, influencer marketing, of course, everybody, most of you have been through our influencer development classes. Some of you have been through our program where we actually develop your influence in 90 days, uh, which is super cool. And, and one of the coolest things is that it, it works. So what you want to do is you want to look your very best. And we're in a whole new digital age. You know, uh, Kate, you do a great job of listening on the interwebs for our clients and, and listening to how, um, how our clients are, are becoming influencers each and every day. And it's a little bit of a work. So you want to say, uh, now all of a sudden you want to be, you want to be uh, really in that, uh, in the know of how to just uh, really get that influence and boost yourself out there. And the goal is to not only get found, but also to be seen. So super cool stuff. So real quick, I have a quick polling question that I'm going to give you our lesson of the day. So the quick polling question is uh, I want to grow my influence. So you can look up on the screen here and you can click on the little flower or daisy if you don't see this. I'm going to launch this right now. So if you want to know more about our influencer development program, our 90-day program, click on the first option. Signing up for flash classes, we automatically have you in press release SEO. You guys know about this. It's hot. We had Joe on a few weeks ago talking about how that jumps you to the top of Google and then monthly social media and our power boost program. So real quick, um, as you're clicking on that, um, I'm going to bring up a screen in the background here that I'm going to show you of how you can measure your influence. So we showed this uh, a few months ago, but people were going, hey, could you show that again? So um, let's see. 
So how many people on with us uh, have actually uh, been through our social selling program? Okay, how many people have been on our social selling program? Okay, looks like some have, some not. So uh, that's inside the social jack, and then we also run it quarterly uh, for you to do that. And and so in the social selling program, uh, a little more for the belts. <laughs> yeah, we have a black belt program with 15 modules, but you don't have to take it all. But the essence of social selling is building relationships to, to, to really attract business and to have your network bring you business. So we have some of our black belts on today. So always, always proud and good to see you guys uh, out there. Thanks for supporting us. And uh, hopefully you, you continue to get more out of this. Um, the social selling index here is uh, if you Google social selling index and Jackson will send out business.linkedin.com. And so, uh, but we'll send this out. But if you go here, uh, what they're gonna do is they're gonna want you to start a free trial of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Um, so, you know, this is something that you can do, but you should be able to, hold on, let's get you to Social Selling Index. There we go, get your free score. So Jackson, I'll send this one out. We don't want you to have to do a free trial. But when you get your free score, uh, all of a sudden, it's going to tell you how you rank in your network. So you'll see I'm the top 1%, top 2%. I'm 82 out of 100 uh, today, and it'll tell you each and every day. Uh, and then at the top, it tells you a couple of different areas. See if I can blow this up for you. To establish your professional brand, where do you rank on the scale? To find the right people, it's looking for relevant right people. So if you have a specific target, you want to find the right people. Engage with insights. This means that you're engaging with content and then build relationships. Well, this is the foundation of social selling. So if you want a quick snapshot within LinkedIn, this doesn't count for all the other social network sites, but if you want a quick snapshot of of how you rate within LinkedIn, within your world, and how well you're doing, make sure you go to Social Selling Index. And what I usually do is just Google Social Selling Index, go out there, make sure you don't sign up for the free trial, make sure you just go to the free score. So uh, everybody got that? Super cool. And, uh, and uh, I just want to make sure, yep, everybody looks like they're good. And Jackson will definitely uh, send out a link. And then... Um, Let's see, uh, Jackson, did you respond to, yes. Um, so uh, did you respond, respond to Miriam there, Jackson? I think Parker did. Okay, good. I just wanna make sure everybody's getting a good response here. All right, good. So let's um, let's not spend any more time on this, but let's, um, let's get our uh, guest on with us today. So let's get over that. All right, so I have my uh, good friend, longtime friend, uh, Chris Barrows. He's a professional podcaster. He's the creator and host of Why I Social Podcast, which is amazing. Make sure you guys check that out. It's just Why I Social. Uh, his podcast is listed on iTunes as one of the top 100 business podcasts. Podcasts would featured on new and noteworthy on iTunes, and then it's listed under the top 10 technology podcast on iTunes. He's also the chairperson of EDU Web. He works at the Social Media Mobile Products Coordinator at NYU for the past five years. And he's also one of my favorite Captain America colleagues out in the world. So, uh, Chris, come on in, man. We're uh, happy to have you. There he is, live from Thank New you. York. I, Chris Barrow. <laughs> I love the gra – you added the shield to the graphics, so you just made my – you'll appreciate my coffee mug, though. <laughs> I have my Thanos coffee mug that I had to my Captain America mug broke recently. Uh it's one of it was a it was a cheap one. So I decided to invest in uh, you know, Thanos's go infinity gauntlet and uh very happy with it. Yeah, and Kate says Thor is her favorite. <laughs> everybody oh, has their favorite super Thor. super yeah i know everybody has their their uh, their favorite superhero. Uh, we had that a few weeks ago. So uh so how you doing? Good, good. Uh, we are snowed in at the moment. Uh, it's really not that bad out, to be honest, compared to the last storm. Uh, we've been hit with a lot of nor'easters here this year. Um, I'm in New Jersey where I live. And uh, yeah, it's so we're snowed in, but we have power. So yay. Um, cross our fingers that that stays that way. And then uh, we're surviving. Uh, and it's a it's a family of four now, as you know. Uh, you know, we just had my daughter Isabella Ray join us uh, about a month ago now. So 
<laughs> just adjusting to this new life with uh, two children instead of one. I know. Congratulations on the arrival of Isabella. So awesome, awesome work. So super cool. Thank you. No, it's been fun. It's different. It's different. It, it, it's different having a daughter, but it's mostly two kids and balancing and making every, you know, uh, and the dog is goes nuts because she's not getting enough attention now. So, you know, trying to make everybody happy. Yeah, absolutely, man. And it's uh, it's an adventure. So just enjoy the ride, man. That's all I can say <laughs> is having two, uh, two older Definitely kids trying. now. Yeah. Um, Kate, uh, Kate said, is it a prereq to be a superhero to be good at social media person? I feel that this is a trend with my speakers. <laughs> I, I mean, who isn't a superhero? No, I, I don't think yeah, it's right. a prereq, but <laughs> no. there's, I, there's a lot of superhero fans, uh, out there. And I think we're all, I think, I think it's, you know, it's interesting. I think with social media, this is actually relevant, uh, to the topic, I think of social as a whole, but I think in the colon current culture and social media helped this pop culture is just more out there than it ever was. So right. I think people who like the superhero are more willing to say it now and they're more right. out there talking about it. It's not, it's not, you know, uncool to be a fan of superheroes where maybe 15 years ago, you know, you wouldn't be telling everybody how much you love Captain America or Spider-Man or something. Yeah. And is it, is it true or is it a rumor that you normally will have your Captain America shirt underneath your, your, your work clothes <laughs> all the time? Not all the time. No, I, uh, <laughs> I usually have some Captain America apparel. I, it was funny. I did a keynote yesterday at a, I, and I don't do keynotes all the time. So this was a really rare occasion for me where I had a cool opportunity and I was doing a keynote for a mentor mentee program, uh, which, you know, you were talking about mentor mentee type program earlier, which I think is great. Uh, and I was doing this and even on the suit, cause I'm not a suit guy, uh, even on my suit, I have a little Captain America pin. So there's always a little Captain America, but um, right. I call it, you know, you talk about personal branding. I mean, it's, honestly become part of my personal brand. So you're always going to find something. Uh, I've got uh, more of it enough Captain America merchandise to make it happen every That's time. True. Every I time am. I, every time I romp around uh, New York with you and go get a slice of pie or whatever we're doing, you always have the backpack on. So I always admire you for, yeah. uh, for sporting the Captain America backpack. So uh, we met about what, about five or six years ago, I think now it's been a while. Yeah. It's about yeah. four or five years at least because uh social media strategy summit. So, right. Yeah, so it seems to be uh, that connect. And uh, and again, thank you for having me on Why I Podcast. I love your show, by the way. It's awesome. Everybody should tune into that for sure. Thank so, you. Yeah, um, we uh, we I, I do want to add too. Um, it's it's because this is important. If anyone goes into is interested in podcasting, I put this out there. I mean, I help people get started with podcasting, but I've been doing podcasting now four years, and I more and more it's coming up. I love seeing that you're doing it. I know we talked about it, you know, relatively early on. And for me, this is exciting because I know you're taking this, you take that audio, you turn that into the podcast. And I just think it's cool to see you doing it because I remember years ago, you talking about it. So to see it really happening for me is just exciting. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, and thank you for, you know, and I just want people to know that you did, you were one of my coaches, one of my go-to people. So I think I had three or four people that, you know, I trust what you guys were telling us and, and going into and, and sort of showed us a pathway of how to get easy on that. So if folks on the line today want to ask Chris a specific uh, a questions about how to get started and things like that. Um, and uh, Miriam, Miriam said, uh, I'm, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, she's like, she's like, well, how do I even get to a podcast? You know, for some people, it's this thing that other people do. And I still find that. And, and so I'm always like trying to, trying to explain to people it's on your phone and they're like, where on my phone. And so it's interesting that there's still this whole yeah. world of people that have yet to find a connection to podcasts. What do you think about that? Well, it's, partially because there's so many different ways to listen to podcasts. I mean, for example, if you have an iPhone, I'm an Android person, but I have a work iPhone. If you're an iPhone, they've got a direct podcast app. If you're on Android, there's Google Play, but it's under Google Play Music. Though I, they right. just did a rebrand, so it looks a little bit better and it's easier to find. But then you've got Stitcher, you've got podcasts on Spotify now. They're literally everywhere. And a lot of people who listen are listening on one platform where – other people are enlisting on completely different ones. So if someone could teach, if someone, for example, if an iPhone was to teach someone, if an Android, this is where I listen, it might not be the same type of app or there's some better cross platform. But I think because there's so many different places to do it, discovery is still an issue 
with podcasts. There was right. uh, I know auto radio was trying to solve this. I don't think I they it. truly did, unfortunately. Uh, but there's there's got to be a better way, and I just don't think it's there yet. Podcasts are obviously booming. They're they're a big opportunity, and I I think it's um. I can't think of who said this. It was at Social Media Strategy Summit. But I remember the idea being discussed of podcasts being very snackable content. And I think that's what makes them so great. But yeah, discovery of it is still not perfected. I think we're getting better. But even on the podcaster side, the data is weak too. So there's a lot of development still happening in this podcasting world that we're going to see it continue to grow. But discovery is hopefully one of the things that will be fixed along the way because it's still weak. I mean, you even mentioned like my podcast being in the top 10 on technology. I mean, I half the time don't know where it stands because it's <laughs> to find out where it stands. Right. I know sometimes I'm in the top 10, sometimes I'm not. It it changes from week to week and I can't even keep up with it sometimes of, of where it is. It's, it's, it's nice to be there, but it's one of those things that you're not always aware and they don't do a great job of telling you. Uh, Apple's not very good at telling Oh, I know. Things, that's that's honest. what that's what we were discovering during this whole journey. It's like, how do we know, you know, it's like, how do you know how many downloads you get? How do you know this? How do you know that? They just now started showing some decent stats. I think they must have heard the voice of us going, "Hey, you know, we don't mind being yeah. on here, but tell us how things are going, you know?" Uh, what's interesting is I have these things, you know, that I, you'll see me walking around with these green ones. I have another set too. And, and I'm a, I'm a addictive learner. I have to be learning all the time. Both my parents were teachers. It must've been beaten into me early childhood, but I, I love to learn new stuff. And in our business, as you know, and everybody knows stuff changes every, what is it like um, 20, 30 seconds. It's like crazy. You know, how many updates are coming out? Here's an example. Since we started recording this today, Instagram, there was, there's an update from Instagram that you can now link hashtags and profiles in your, your Instagram bio. I mean, that just happened within the span of today at some point. And I saw it and, and but these things are constantly changing. So staying up to date, it's in social and in influencing podcast and whatever it may be. I mean, constantly new things, I think. And then it's, I remember the other day when I saw anchor, which has been trying to really establish itself as a, long-term feasible podcast host though i don't know they're long-term because eventually i have to charge people they've added video recently so i mean they're constantly making changes to these platforms and to stay up to date it involves real time and effort and, and quite frankly i feel passion because if you don't have the passion for it you're eventually going to fall behind and i i'm the first to always say that when i turn 50 i don't want to be behind on technology whereas my parents and you know god love them i'm their i'm their tech support and I don't want to have someone be tech support for me. So I try to stay as up to date as I can, but I mean, it you got to love it and you got to want to. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, for sure. Somebody said, uh, somebody asked, I see Chris in front of a radio microphone. Do you need that to record a podcast? So I'm going to back up just for a second, just because you said something and you said it so fast. I think people take it for granted. What we do is, uh, and sometimes I don't even know what we do. We just like keep evolving thanks to friends like Chris. But we do a live webcast. Those of you that are on with us right at this second at uh, 1228 Central Time are on a live broadcast webcast with us. Then what Jackson does is he converts that to a podcast. You can have these and this and you can walk, you know, you can be at the gym, you could be at home and then you can go to iTunes and Stitcher, as Chris said, and, and then listen to these things. So, uh, so Chris, you said that you coach a lot of people like you coached us to, to sort of get out of the gate. What would you say to people that are just like, you know, well, what does it take, you know, to, to, to be a good podcaster? You know it doesn't take in, and I mean, I've actually got a good example here. So I've got this rig set up, obviously, where I've got the arm, the, the mic is attached, and then the filter because and, and plus the, the pop filter is really important. I highly recommend it. Uh, but I'm and I'm trying to pull this over, but I've got an extra one as I'm bumping my mic here. Uh, I've got this. And you can see it's a cheap, but this is the really cheap stand that it comes with. But this is an ATR 2100 relatively affordable. Uh, you can get one of those and just kind of set it on your desk. And I got this on, D, uh, on discount, and I think I paid under $100 for two of them. So they wouldn't always be that price for two. You, you, you might pay over 100 But the point is, I can connect this. It's got USB. I don't know how well this is showing because I don't have the best camera on my computer. But you've got USB on there. You don't need anything crazy. 
you you got to invest a little bit into a good quality into a quality enough mic but an atr 2100 still to be quite honest very entry level a lot of times people ask me well you see your mic sounds really good it it's all about the setup and the space you're in i am in a basement but it's very quiet down here i've kind of panned myself around if i actually was i if i actually set it up ideally that door behind me i would go set up in there pad it and make it make that my podcasting room because that would even create better sound. So you've got to set up that space accordingly, but you don't need expensive equipment. You just don't. Uh, if you look at what they were trying to do with Anchor, and again, as I talk about Anchor, it's a service that right now you can host a podcast for free, but like I said, I don't know its longevity. So I, I'm always cautious. I use Libsyn for hosting and I do that for a reason. Podcasting, honestly, the investment is more time. I think you've learned that. Uh, it's it's yeah. time because you have to go through, you have to edit, you have to create the quality product. Uh, you have to, I mean, I go through just as an example, I have a, my podcast, I've got two, uh, five favorites is a very back and forth show with my, uh, my co my co-host Amir Zanozi, which is, it's a very radio show style. There's a lot of pop culture reference. We have fun, but it's tech news, but why socials interviews with people who I may or may not know. Well, I mean, you've been on the show, Dean, and I go through and I delete ums. I don't know if, if people realize how often they say, um, but when you edit, you go through. And if you think a 30 minute conversation and editing ums out is fun, it's not, it's work. And right. it might take me an hour to go through and edit the actual episode. So again, I'm talking a half hour to record 15 minutes to set up 15 minutes of post conversation and an hour to edit, then getting the show notes together, uploading it. We're talking three to five hours. So I'm, I'm telling people the time investment is bigger than the money investment. And right. that's the thing I stress. So make sure you have the time and the willingness to do it because I see more people start a podcast and then just disappear. And it, it kind of disappoints me because I don't think they did the groundwork. And if they did the groundwork, they would know if they were going to be able to do it or not. Yeah. And I see, um, uh, you know, what it, I think consistency is key too, but I come from a radio background. So, you know, we had a, you know, come hell or high water, no matter what it was, we had a show, yep. you know, it was on the air, people were live and, and maybe that's why I do it this way. I know we don't have to, we're talking about doing some that are not live or we're just doing the interview style and making sure that we, you know, get the content because not everybody can, you know, be with us at noon every, you know, on Wednesdays, uh, you know, no matter how far we book them out, that type of thing. But what do you think about consistency? Consistency is everything. I was talking about this uh, last night at the event that I was speaking at. Um, and one of the things I stress is if you're not consistent, people aren't going to be interested. And I mean, in not just in podcasting, but in what you do across social, what you do with your digital identity. Right. And I speak to digital identity as opposed to personal brand, because I think overall our digital identity is impacted by everything. And what we do in life, I don't care, like I say, if it's podcasting or if it's, uh, you know, tweeting, what, whatever it may be, if we aren't consistent, there's an issue uh, there. And, and there doesn't be a name here, but, you know, there, there's people I've seen that, you know, might say one thing and the next day completely change what they're doing on on, on social and say a completely different thing. I mean, in particular, I mean, it was it was it's disheartening sometimes. And I mean, no disrespect to some of these bigger speakers in the social space, but when you look at someone and just as an example, and this is an, an actual thing that someone has said, I saw someone talk about all about being yourself, et cetera. It's really important to be yourself. And then later on, and this was, I think, sometime last year, they later put up a LinkedIn post that talked about, see what the people you want to be like are doing and try to be like them. And I said, but that's not being yourself. You can't contradict yourself that yeah. way. Yeah. No. And, and so to me, holding true to who you are is so important. So please be, con you know, that consistency it's not just in this podcasting space. It's across life. Uh, you've got to be true to yourself. And in terms of influence, I think that ends up being huge. I mean, we obviously, you know, one of the things we're here to talk about is influence. And I'll just say this. If you were to, I put this example out, I think, on uh, my friend Ross Brand's show, too, when, when I was on there. And I talked about the fact that if you were, say, going to be a car influencer, right? You like cars. If you were talking all about Ford for six weeks, right? And you're saying, I love Ford. This is the best car. And suddenly you're doing the same thing with Subaru. Oh, no, Subaru is the best car. And you were just talking about Ford being the best car. At a certain point, after a while, you do enough brand. Well, really, what's the best? You're, you're, who's paying you? You're going to say they're the best car. Your word means nothing. Right. Wherein you, it, you've got to mind what you're saying. And uh, I think just sometimes people run their mouth, but they don't think about what's coming out. 
Yeah, it's it's so true to form. And uh, some people were asking if you inside if you search in uh, Social Jack, if you search podcast, you'll actually hear previous episodes with my good friend Chris. And we actually held a class here in Chicago that we recorded too that might be of of help as well. Um, before we get into more how tos, because we could spend probably hours. I know we spent a four hour class on it, but uh, on um, more back to you, Chris. Uh, I'm always curious. So. Where did you, you know, tell me about how you went from, you know, you're at uh, NYU, you're in social media. How did you like, like to decide to commit to why I social and how did that come to be? So what happened was I was looking at the social media space. And again, I say with this, with the utmost respect for the industry, but there's a problem. And the problem is that the biggest names in the space, uh, and by biggest, I simply mean the loudest names we're getting all this attention. They were the only ones on all these podcasts. That was what was happening. You would see, and again, some of these people, great people who at one point maybe maybe were true practitioners, but a lot of them had kind of gone and become this professional speaker. I, I mentioned, and, and this is probably why I will never speak there, but I mentioned the social media marketing world where it's the same people every year for the most part when I look, a lot of the same topics, right. a lot of a repeat topics. There's There's nothing new and original to me. And the thing that boggled my mind about it was, well, why is it the same people? And it's because of the way a lot of these things are set up where you either pay to go or you have to submit and then get a pr whatever the, the process is. And I want to feature people who don't get featured. There are great people doing amazing things. Oh, I'm going to yeah. call them out right now. Casey Szymanski. Casey has been on my show. This is, she's the first person to be on the show twice. The latest episode of Why Social had her on. But she had just, she's been at Cisco now, I think three, three and a half years or whatever it may be. Cause basically right before she came on the show, she was about to get the job. She's about this weekend. You want to talk about remarkable people. She is getting married this week. And then two days later, shaving her head for St. Baldrick's foundation. Her work with Instagram at Cisco is remarkable. And as a person, she's a remarkable individual. So oh. I wanted to feature the stories of these people. She stands out cause she's really recent, obviously, but I, I think these people are the ones who deserve the attention not a lot of the big names because a lot of the big names aren't doing the work anymore. And again, not to take the career away from work that they once did, but let's talk to the people who are in the weeds. And that's what it was all about. I, I always share this too, because this is really important and this is about listening. And it's the fact that when I first started the show and the tagline has since changed to be fair, because shows evolved. But when I first launched show, the tagline of show was from average Joe to CEO, right. but my and initial pitch, of, but my initial pitch was from CEO to average Joe, my wife, because we listen to our spouses, you know, whoever right. you're singing with other, it's listen to them. She said to me, she goes, no, you got it wrong. And I was like, well, what do you mean you got it wrong? She's like, you got it completely wrong. It should be from average Joe to CEO. And I was like, holy crap, you're right. That's exactly what it should be. But that was me listening to my wife. So my wife is, and, and she's upstairs with our two kids right now. And I mean, she's my, she's my best friend. She's my constant. She's my biggest supporter. And, uh, you know, listening to her, I think played a big part in that, the creation of a show. And, it's been rewarding. I don't do it because, you know, you know, because I have a sponsor of those sorts of things. Like that's, that's kind of a byproduct that happened, but I do it because of the passion that I have for telling people stories who aren't getting told otherwise. And sometimes they're cool stories. And uh, sometimes it's just a chance to feature someone who quite frankly deserves to be in the spotlight. And that's why that's the origin of it. Uh, and, and that's going to be the reason it continues as long as I can do it and have that time. Yeah, no, it's super cool. Super cool. Um, <clears throat> some questions coming in is, uh, how does Chris make money from all this? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I joke that I never did it to make money. It, it was never the goal. Right. I wasn't right. doing it for that purpose, but the passion that I had for it was picked up first for a while it was sponsored by zoom, which was, an they were incredible partners. Their business went a different direction and, and they obviously sponsored the podcast for some time. And then I went a few months without a sponsor and it wasn't a big deal, but I was very picky and, and I made money because of passion the first time. Well, I ended up on sponsoring now with the national Institute for social media, which is, uh, you know, based out of Minnesota and they're a remarkable, remarkable group. Jennifer Radke kind of reached out and we had conversations, but I took the time I had opportunities to make more money than, and I'm not obviously bad at disclosing. I had opportunity to make a lot more money than I probably make but I want the right partner. So for me, it's never been about the money, but I think if you have the passion and you execute a strong 
you know, program or a, a strong strategy, depending what it is you're doing. It doesn't have to be a podcast. People right. will hear it and they might be interested. You know, I, I'm I'm the first to tell you my my hope is one day people listen to our five favorites podcasts that Amir and I do and say, Hey, we'd love to have you on Sirius Radio or something. I, I don't expect it, but I mean that's the that's the thing. Like I I could love I would love to have that kind of fun and get there, but I'm never gonna get there if I don't do. And so the biggest thing is taking time to do. Don't sit on your butt the entire time. Be like, well, eventually I'll do this. Eventually I'll do this. Uh, you've got to go and get it done. It's not saying don't have a plan because I think people misconstrue it. There's a lot of people say, no, just go do it. Don't think about it. I still say think about it, but seriously, execute. And uh, it's a lesson I have to tell myself even because I'm very gung-ho when I have ideas. I have another thing that I – a project that I've been working on that is not as far as I like that's not related to podcasting, but – I have to say that same message myself. Remind me, no, you just have to do because when you do this, something might come of it. And uh, so I remind myself of it too. Even when I'm saying this, I'm saying, yeah, well, Chris, what about that other thing? But uh, mind your time and execute well, and you'll never know what's going to happen. People might want to pay you money for what you're doing, but never lose track of the reason you started. And that's the right. thing that I, I think you need to stress. If you lose track of why you started doing it and suddenly get into, well, if I do this, I make more money. Now, don't, don't let the money be the guide. Let the passion for why you started in the first place be your guide. And and, and yeah. the money may come. And it might not come. <clears throat> I can't promise it. But uh, right. I think the money comes when you when you have heart. Yeah, and when you're when you're all in. I mean, I that's what was popping into my head is when you're all in on yourself, uh, you know, then then it then it starts to pop. And I like I like your reference again about authenticity. Uh, we we teach the power of authenticity, and and your and and telling your story. So as we're doing this influencer development program, we help people build that story of themselves. And I'm like, everybody has a story, everyone. And that's why I love that you you carry this range of all kinds of people on your program that are just like you know they they don't have to be you know the the top influencer, but everybody's an influencer no matter what level they're at, and. They're, 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 they have a next place to go, and, and it's their choice to, to step into that next place. Yeah, and influence, I believe very strongly in niche influence. If you look at it, look, I think it's been proven. We've seen it with the bots and all these other things of just how valuable real relationships are. Right. Uh, I mean, if you want – look, I'm, again, I'm, I'm a polite person, um, but go look at a top influencer list from a lot of these automated systems right. that are pulling it. They're very strongly based on followers. But what I encourage people to do if they're looking at influence, look at the people's follower ratio and then look at their engagement ratio. I guarantee you, a lot of these people say, I didn't buy followers or these sort of things. Look, look, look a lot of them did and they're flat out lying. Other ones <laughs> might have done it when they thought it was the thing to do. And, and, and maybe that was the case. But the point is the engagement rate is very – Important. And the other thing is, who are these people's connections? Yes, Again, I was you. lucky. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky. I had a partner with Zoom. So I had really, and I still do, I have in-depth data about who communicates and has conversations. So I know my audience and I can share my audience and, and I, you know, with potential, whether it be sponsors or people who want to be involved with the show. But if you aren't looking at the data of who the people you're connecting to are, you're missing out. Uh, then there's a difference. I think you talked about this before, but there's a difference between celebrity marketing and influencer marketing. Right. Uh, and celebrities are their. I mean, yes, Kim Kardashian can crash a website, or or and you've got you know Snapchat can literally lose a lot of money in stock because of an ad that targets Rihanna, and Rihanna shares something about it. We saw this right. recently. Rihanna, obviously, her response to Snapchat's really stupid ad. By the way, right. uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look it up. That sunk them, but that's not – that's – yes, there's an influential component there, but that's a celebrity marketing or celebrity right. reaction. I, I think there's a difference. I really believe that. Uh, I know not every influencer professional necessarily agrees, but I, I think there's a big difference between a celebrity who obviously gets significant reaction to anything they do versus an influencer. <clears throat> Yeah, and in fact, our business is focused on the B2B influencer, business influencers. And what's interesting is we have a lot of traditional, I'll call it celebrity influencers. We're working on a, a fitness uh, celebrity now 
that was always, you know, on the end user of the markets. And he's like, I want to train in more corporate America settings. I want more corporate America training gigs. And we're like, that's what we can help you out with. We know where the business audiences are. We know where we can uh, help create your story so that they're attracted and connected. And I think most of the people that are on our, uh, in our audience are in business. They're, um, small business owners, they're entrepreneurs, uh, they're people that are within companies that are looking to take that next level of themselves to that next level. And you know, I teach this uh, in higher ed, <laughs> in grad school. So the idea is, my passion is that that people that that listen to what we're saying, they can take one nugget based on wherever they're at at this moment and take it one step further from this day on. So that's that's my vision yeah. with all this yes yeah, so, no, and i uh, think again yeah. i just want to say that every, you said it before but i want to stress it everyone has influence and that's the thing that we have to stress to anyone who's talking about it everyone you all influence someone uh, i go to the family level when it comes down to it uh you know and and when i break it down the person that i know i have the most influence over is my my children and that's my most important responsibility. If I take that and scale that up and how I can use that in other ways, it's actually a really powerful thought, but that is still always gonna, always gonna be my focus. And I'm a very family first, uh, I, I use the hashtag people first sometimes because I think you just have to put people, uh, you know, um, and think of, remember that they are people, whether you agree with them or disagree with them, you have to respect that. Uh, and, and as long as they respect you, obviously, I think there's, there's a fine line there. If someone doesn't respect you, I, I certainly think you can share your thoughts accordingly at that point, but, uh, you know, respect people and put people first. So, uh, you know, and in my case, it's very family first too, of course, because oh, for sure. kids, I'm, I'm also in like dad mode, full dad mode. Now <laughs> with, with, uh, with yeah. Look at this, man. Every time we do this, man, we're just about out of time. It drives me absolutely insane. Um, so before I, before I have to let you go, a lot of people are asking, you know, what's, what's Chris's favorite tools? What does he use to edit? So maybe in a 60 seconds, I know it's yeah. tough to do, but maybe just give us a quick snapshot of your favorite tools and we'll try to write these down and then we'll get sure. your list out to folks. And I'll also, I have, if you go to whysocial.com, uh, we have a resources page that has lists a variety of useful things. So please feel free to check that out. Uh, but I will say this, if you're basic, uh, if you're basic, you can use something like Audacity that's free. If you have the Adobe suite, Adobe Premiere, uh, uh, Adobe Audition is what I use. Uh, Audacity, when I didn't have Adobe, was what I use for editing. And then uh, I use to record my podcast, I use Zencaster, uh, which is a paid tool. Uh, but I also do, uh, I did before Skype with a tool called Call Recorder, which you pay 20 bucks and it's a lifetime access to, so it's really useful. Uh, so you can do that for editing. and But I use Zencaster right now. And then uh, I use Libsyn for hosting. There's a variety of tools out there. The only advice I'm going to really give on that is please don't use SoundCloud. Uh, just it's not good for hosting. It, just don't do it. Uh, Libsyn, there's a variety of other ones. I'm still, like I said, Anchor's, oh, Anchor's good for people getting started, but I like it as a sub podcast thing. I don't think it's, I just don't know its longevity yet. So I'm, I'm very wary of a, even though it's free telling people to use it, but those are some of the quick hits, but I have a whole document about, and it's focused on higher ed, like how to get started with podcasting for higher education, but it applies to everybody. So if you actually go to my why social, I think it might be why social.com slash resources, but I can get you the link. Uh, there's a whole document there. It's a PDF that I think will be immensely useful to everybody. And it does include equipment. Cause I know we got the equipment question earlier and it does include equipment and some starting costs that you could have. Got it. Super cool. And we'll make sure we get, uh, we'll find uh, those links. If we can't, we'll hit you up, but uh, we'll look on the website and send that out to folks. So they have that as a, as a resource. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. So real quick, before I let you go, uh, I just have one final polling question here and we'll bring our team back. But um, I want to uh, know if people want to be on the uh, waiting list because we have these, uh, we have these uh, uh, big events uh, in 
uh, Chicago, uh, and we have them in other cities. And a lot of times people want to make sure they get included on what we call the waiting list. So Chris, what we do is we have a waiting list of folks coming into an event and then we'll hold an influencer development class or a podcast, you know, how to podcast class and those types of things. So on our influencer development workshop, that's coming up in May. If you want to be part of that, just click on the first one. And if you want to be part of just our regular influencer frenzy networking events and, uh, Chris, maybe we'll bring you into those. It's a it's a fun format where we um, we actually broadcast people into the room into a live networking event and interview in that setting. It's sort of like a uh, I don't know I don't even know what to call it. It's like a simulcast remote broadcast type thing. <laughs> sure. You know me, I'm always creating something different. You know. Um, so yeah, and I'm stuff. hoping that I will tell you. I was hoping to get out to Chicago. Obviously, I'll be on leave with the baby, but I was really hoping to get out to the. Chicago is going to go for a mobile conference that I was going to be attending for work. And now obviously I'm not going to, but I was going to be out in Chicago. I was, would have told you obviously if I ended up out there, but um, it's kind of bummed. I was hoping to get to Chicago this year. I don't know if it's going to happen. I will be in San Diego for EDU web in the, in July. So I'm excited about that. Uh, so that, that'll yeah. be, I'll at least go out and get some sun. <laughs> for sure. And you know, I'm always coming to New York, so I'll, I'll see you out there. And I have uh, friends in Jersey I, I visit all the time, so super cool. So, uh, and everybody, don't forget to, to join us next uh, Wednesday. We'll be tweeting out that guest here shortly. And what I want you to type in while, we're, while Jackson's choosing the winner, our engagement winner today, is I want everyone to take away one thing that they've learned and what are they actually going to put into practice, put into use? What is one thing that you were inspired by as Chris was talking, as we were going through things that you learned that you're going to put into practice? So type that in, um, type that in right now into the questions area. And so uh, just so that you can sort of seal the deal and we can help watch for you out there and, and help support you. So we have a lot of people that are going to explore podcasting, people are consistency, listening better. That's always a good one. I can always use that. Inspired to check out podcast, Why I Social. People are going to start listening in to Why I Social. So super cool. Don't forget about five favorites. Don't follow lead. Very good letter. That's cool. Uh, passion for podcasting and your subject area from Peter. Uh, can I uh, yeah. <laughs> Can I say all the above? Of course. Uh, but I want you to claim at least one because a lot of times we'll walk away with a list and we won't do anything. So we want to make sure everybody's jumping in on this for yourself. Um, need to get started and stay focused. So good job, everybody. So we want to make sure you take that. So uh, Jackson, so do we have a uh, do we have a winner? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, it is Eric Spencer. Ah, Eric, congratulations. So you'll get a Starbucks gift card. So Eric, one of the things that we want you to do with that gift card, so when you get a gift card from us, it's for Starbucks, we want you to take something that you learned from us or were inspired by, and we want you to take somebody to Starbucks and talk to them about that. So you can sort of wire that in. And, and if you, you learn techniques, uh, really take it and, and take that person to Starbucks um, and do, you know, just, just share with that person what you learned. And that's one of our things, uh, Chris, that we love is uh, uh, we actually ask everybody that's in our classes that whenever they learn from us, that they teach someone else, they pass it along. And uh, that's our, that's sort of our, our main theme here of doing that. So, uh, so those, um, those people that uh, uh, want to uh, connect to Chris, Chris, it's uh, at C Barrows. Is that the best uh, Twitter uh, address to yeah. follow you? Right? Yep. Yeah. That's they can connect at C Barrows. And I'll just also say, if you want to follow the podcast, um, there's at Y social and then five favorites, uh, which you're going to get social media marketing and technology news. Social media is very focused. Uh, why is social is very focused on let's talk social, some best practices, here's some news. Uh, five favorites is all things social marketing and technology and a lot of fun. Uh, we got a lot of SaaS on that account. Uh, <laughs> and that's the number five favorites cast. Uh, I tried to get at five favorites, but Twitter support would not budge on the person who owns it and is not using it. So I had squatters. to go with five favorites. I hate squatters. I'm putting yeah. that out there. I hate squatters. I, I don't think, I don't know. They're just not using it. I, I think they got it at some point and they disappeared off the face of the earth, but Twitter support was nowhere, unfortunately. So yeah. had to get something. I know. I'm with you, man. We had uh, we had social jack and then uh, we couldn't get the email to get in and we tried for a year with Twitter to, to get it to release it to us and they still won't. So we have get social jack. So 
There you go. Um, all right. Well, Chris, as always, uh, it's always a blast, man. I miss you. Uh, can't wait to see you in person. And uh, thank you for sharing all your knowledge and your wisdom with us. And uh, we really appreciate it. It uh, looks like there was a lot of social chatter as well. Um, so uh, we um, uh, did you guys tag uh, Sirius X XM or whatever so they can uh, get Chris on there? So we'll make sure. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll see that. about that. <laughs> All right. So everybody said great know. show. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? Well, I, I, if, if that ever happens, um, if that ever happens, I'll have to give some credit back to you then. So we'll, we'll see go. about there that one. Yeah, just don't forget me when you go big time. That's all we ask. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, everybody, from all of us here at Social Jack headquarters. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you that were listening live and those of you that are downloading the podcast. We appreciate all of you. And please keep sending in questions and requests, and we'll do our best to keep up with them. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye. Bye.